here today with the newly appointed mayor of Nogales, Arizona, Octavio Garcia Van Borsten, 28 years old. Um, congratulations, Mayor, on your appointed position. Thank you for having us. Um, mayor Garcia Van Borstel has a long history of political involvement in his family. His grandfather was mayor of Nogales, Sonora, and now he finds himself in this in this position. Um, after a very tumultuous and contentious period where a stalemate on the city council was finally broken thanks to Mayor Garcia Van Borsten who reached out to the opposition and uh, got it the negotiations to the point where he became the appointed mayor we have Ramon Felix as city councilman to backfill his position and of course we have uh, Jaime Fontes as the uh, city manager. Uh, Mayor, first of all I want to see you know what what your position is as far as the office. Are you planning to uh, continue through the late Mayor Barraza's term or will you be cutting out after this election and seek a special election? Uh, well, well, Manny, Mr. Coppola, thank you for the, for the opportunity. Before we get started, I would like to thank you uh, for your comments. I, I greatly appreciate it, uh, first of all. Secondly, I, I feel very blessed for the opportunity that has been given to me uh, to serve as mayor of this great city by the majority of the city council. And, and I do intend uh, to serve out uh, the late Mayor Barraza's uh, term. I think um, it is important to have a full council and mayor and a full-time city manager uh, to carry out the duties of, of the city. You're, of course, uh, your move to reconcile the council was seen by some as uh, um, a power move and it didn't go very smoothly as far as uh, two of the councilmen, namely Nubaja Nesian and Arturo Garino. Do you feel that you're going to be able to uh, mend those bridges and, and work together? Uh, Mr. Coppola, I do have a lot of faith uh, that I will do so. I, I sh certainly will try to do so. Uh, I, Councilman Hessian and, and Councilman Garin are people that I respect deeply and that I will. Uh, I've committed uh, myself to working with every Councilman and not only a selected few and I include all those Councilmen and, and as a whole, so I mean, I'm looking forward and working with with everyone. And, and again, I I gotta respect their opinion. I respect everyone's opinion. And at the end of the day, uh, I do have faith and trust that everyone will vote their conscience. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to start out by talking about the state of the city after the dust is beginning to settle. Now, um, there's still some pending legal issues that have to be resolved before you can start taking official action and that hopefully will be taken care of by the end of the month so that in May you'll be able to be in your official full capacity to conduct business as usual. How do you see the office, how do you perceive the office of the mayor and what will be your involvement as far as the day-to-day -day activities of City Hall? Well, I can begin with, uh, with one of my top priorities is creating a, a healthy and positive working environment for, for everyone. I think that uh, if, if employees, staff, or administration feel comfortable in their environment, uh, they will do a job that, uh, that is well done, uh, will be recognized by all. Um, we need to eliminate our negative image that, uh, that has been created from time to time. I think that we need to stay as positive as we can, and and that's what one of my top priorities right now. I I have uh, taken official office. I am uh, doing the day-to-day -day activity that the mayor uh, should should do. Um, I don't get involved with with employees or employee negotiations at all. But I do. I am here to serve as mayor, and, and I have uh, full intent to do so. One of the uh, criticisms of your predecessor was that uh, 
he was too involved in, in the business activities of the city and the day-to-day -day operations, and, and mainly to his credit because there was no city manager in place. So I think he kind of was filling in the void, uh, but it was not proper as per the city charter. Are you, are you going to respect the city charter as far as this being a strong city manager form of government? Uh, I will respect the city charter, um, and that's why it was critical and crucial to have a full-time uh, city manager to carry out those day-to-day uh, -day activities that need to be dealt with uh, on a daily basis. And um, again, you know, I'm here to unite the council, work with everyone, and, and again, uh, reach out to to what, reach out to issues that need to be dealt with through the city manager, as the uh, city charter states. Okay, so tell me, um, we've got about 75 days before the uh, budget for FY 2008-2009 should be prepared. Um, we have not seen any study sessions or any other preparations or signs of preparations. They may be going on, we just have not been aware of them publicly. Mm -hmm. Where are we at as far as budget preparation? Uh, the, the budget preparation is moving forward. I just had uh, a meeting with uh, our financial director this morning, Mr. Chuck Wilson. And he has indicated to me that uh, he is in the process of hiring a budget director to, to give guidance uh, to the financial department and move along with, with our budget. Is that a budgeted position? It, um, I don't, I am not sure to be honest with you. That's something that we can certainly uh, ask uh, Mr. Wilson if that's a, a budgeted position or not. But with, uh, I have been indicated to by him that, uh, he's indicated to me that that uh, he is currently searching for a budget director to give uh, aid to the process. Okay. Um, in your estimation, what are the, say, three most important or pressing infrastructure projects pending? Uh, certainly, I could certainly address the, the WASH infrastructure. That uh, you, you're well aware that we dealt uh, with big problem there that could become critical if we don't address that immediately. Um, another infrastructure um, project that I'm pursuing is a Micasita trailer park infrastructure for um, the flood. We don't want to go through that again. Um, another infrastructure need is, is you know, having the proper um, utilities, I guess, to, to develop the west area that uh, that I'm very fond of developing, as we have spoken about, and I think that we need to start looking towards that area of Nogales, which is one of the few virgin uh, areas that properties out that uh, need to be developed. And, and you mentioned to me earlier, Mayor, um, as far as revisiting Ordinance 20X, uh, which is the uh, building ordinance. Uh, you see 20X as an obstacle to this? Uh, I certainly see 20X as an obstacle. I think that we do need to follow procedure and uh, go by the book. So I think it is important that we establish a study session where we, uh, where it's worth looking at that uh, ordinance again and see what uh, what is in place and what uh, what needs to be done in order to develop uh, that area? What do you see as the major obstacle in 20X? Well, I see that 20X was uh, originated from, uh, from, uh, from another city that may not apply to the city of Nogales, and that's the main thing. Uh, again, we need to revisit that and make sure that that's not the case, but if it is, we need to make sure that we we apply it to the, to the city of Nogales the way it should be applied. 